hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make this stylish kimono with an open beaded back so if this is something you're interested in learning how to make keep on watching if you're still yet to subscribe to my channel please hit on the subscribe button and let's get started with the video so guys for this tutorial i'm going to make use of this fabric here what i have here is four yards but i'm only going to be using two yards of fabric for the tutorial and then i have my beads you can get any uh, size of your choice if you want your beads to be bigger you can get the ones that are bigger so just basically all you need is your fabric and your bead now i'm going to be folding just two yards of the fabric i have here into four this is because we are going to be cutting the front and the back together so like i said before i'm going to be using two yards for this tutorial so if you have two yards of fabric you should be able to make this as you can see i folded this fabric into two before and now i'm folding it again to make it a fold in four places we are going to be cutting the front and the back together in the exact same way so first i'm going to draw a straight line across the top to serve as our starting line so now from this starting line i'm going to go in by three inches from the center that's the area where you do not have any cut at all so i came in by three inches and that three inches is going to be the width of our neckline now from this starting line which is also the shoulder line i'm going to come down by 20 inches for the width of my sleeve now this is because this particular sleeve that was in the tutorial i'm trying to recreate is wide now, if you want yours to be shorter, you can totally make it shorter. It doesn't have to be 20 inches wide. Okay, now from the center, I'm going to go in by quarter of my hip measurement. I marked it here and I'm adding an extra 5 inch for ease because this is a free booboo. Now I'm going to connect it into the armhole. Remember that this wide area here is the sleeve. And from here, I'll just go ahead and take it all the way down just a straight line now if you don't want your sleeve to be this wide it's totally fine okay so now for the shoulder i decided to come down by one inch for my shoulder slope which is also another optional thing if you don't want it to be sloped it's actually fine so i just sloped it to meet the neckline and i went ahead to cut it out cut off the area of the sleeve and then the rest of the body Now I'm going to go ahead and also cut out the neckline. But for this, we are not going to do anything special. From the 3 inches we came in by earlier, just go ahead and cut all the way down in a straight line. So for this kimono, I'm actually maintaining the length of the fabric, which is about 45 inches. So that's the length I have here for the full length of the kimono. So guys, I'm done cutting it out. Once you're done, you're going to have four pieces, okay? two for the front and two for the back so i'm going to be taking two away and we'll work on the first two you can pick any one of your choice so these first two we are going to take them as the back so we'll just go ahead and fold the center here just like this and do the same thing for this other one so guys i'll stitch it down here as you can see in the middle of both the two back pieces and this is what it looks like so we're going to be leaving this aside now let's bring down the front pieces so these are the two front pieces like i said you can literally pick any one you like so i've taken one of the front pieces now and I'm, i've picked one of the back pieces so i'm placing them right sides facing each other so one front piece and one back piece place them right sides facing each other and you will notice that the front piece looks as if it's longer that's because we didn't fold the front so i'm going to go ahead and just stitch down the shoulder area of both the front and the back here so guys this is what it looks like after i was done stitching it down on the shoulder so i've turned it over to the right side and iron it out you can see the back and the front so this is one side of the kimono and then this is the other side so the thing that is going to join these two sides together is going to be the beads and of course the band around the neckline 
So the band is what we are going to be working on now. Remember, we have already folded the center back. So the part that is not folded is obviously the front. So it's easy to get. Now, this is my band. So the width of my band is about four and a half inches. So it's four and a half inches wide. And for the length, you can just make the length like three times the length you have on your fabric. So that should definitely be enough and to even remain. Okay. So now I'm going to pin the band to the front part of the kimono. So I'm doing it from the back towards the front. So I'm just going ahead to pin it down. So I'm placing the the band on the wrong side. Okay. So I'm just going to place it like this. I'm going ahead to pin it down. When you get to where it ended in front, you'll notice that there's an allowance in front here. So just make sure you are using the whole allowance on the front part. Just go ahead and pin it down. So I'm done pinning the band on the front space that we are yet to stitch. When you get to the back where you have already stitched down, you don't need to continue again. So now for the back neck width, remember that when we were cutting this out, we actually use 3 inches for the width of our neckline and 3 times 2 is 6. Now if you want this kimono to just have like a simple straight small opening on the back, you will use exactly that 6 inches. So just that 6 inches. So from where you stop on your front, you will just measure 6 inches and make a mark there. Just go ahead and make a mark there. But for me, I want it to be a little bit wider so that it looks exactly like what is in the video I'm trying to follow. So instead of these 6 inches, I decided to use 9 inches. Guys, I know that this part will be very tricky. Even I, as I was making this video, was really hoping that you guys will understand because this is like the major part of this tutorial. But anyways, once you've gotten this point, what you're going to do is to bring the front part of the second part. You know, you've pin down one part to get to the middle then the second part here now you're going to start pinning it down from this new point so that the free space you have in between is going to be the neckline for the back i hope that you guys actually understand so from here to this other part is going to be the neckline for the back you will notice that there's a band around your neckline this is going to be the band around your neckline so from this second point now i'm going to place the other front piece so just like you've been pinning it down, just pin it like this and then just continue to pin it until you get to the end. And if you have any excess on the band, go ahead and cut it out. So guys, it's all pinned down now. You can see the back part are actually falling towards me. So you can see the opening in between here. So this is the back. Now, this is just the neckline connecting both the front and the back. So what I'm going to do now is to make my first stitch on the sewing machine. When I get here, I'll stop and then continue from here to the other end. So guys, I'm done making the first stitch now. So you can see what it looks like. I hope you guys can see it. So this is it all the way around. Now, what I'm going to do is to make the top stitch that is going to like finish up the neckline. So how we are going to do that is I'm going to open up everything again. You see we are back to square one well, the way it was arranged before I went to stitch it down. So I'm going to come to this end and I'm going to fold this part like this. Take in the stitching allowance from the first stitch and just use it to cover up everything neatly. So this is why I decided to do it from the back so that I'll be able to stitch it towards the front and be able to control the stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to pin it down like this. And then when you get to the free space around the back neckline, you're just going to fold the two parts. So fold the two parts like I've done like this. Just fold the two pieces inside and just continue the same way. Fold the two pieces in like this, pin it down. And when you get to the other side, which is the other part of the front, continue to do it the same way that I did on the other side. <laughs> I'm done pinning it all down now. We are just going to head over to the sewing machine and make a top stitch to connect everything together. When you're making your top stitch, please try as much as possible to make sure that it's very clean and neat because you are stitching towards the front and you don't want it to be looking rough. 
And when you get to the point where the back neckline started, that's the band for the back, just go ahead and just push in the two edges of the band and just stitch it down. Remove the pins like I'm doing here and just continue to stitch it down. But just make sure it looks very neat. You can see what I have here. So make sure it looks something like this and just continue with the other part of the band. I'm done stitching it down now and this is what it looks like. So you can see the band is all the way around the front neckline. So that's how you differentiate between the front and the back at this point. So for the front, there's a band all the way around. And for the back, you don't have the band. You just have the area where you just stitch it down. So this is here and here. This is the back. And then the one with the band is the front. So basically, the thing that is going to be joining the two sides of the back together is going to be the beading. So we'll be doing that one later, but first we are going to go ahead and finish up the sleeve area of this dress. So you can fold it up like this or use another fabric to fold it up. Then also I'll go ahead and stitch down the sides and also finish up the ends. So this is what it looks like. I have stitch down the sleeve i had to use another fabric to stitch down the sleeve because i wanted it to be a little bit longer and then i'll stitch down the sides as well and i've finished up the ends so basically we are almost done with this the only thing left now is for us to stitch the beads to the back so i'm going to go ahead and do that now so i'll come to the top of the back neckline here very close to the band i'm going to just go in with my hand needle here just a little bit make sure that the stitch doesn't come out into the front part just do it that's that was why we folded this area earlier the area of the back that we folded so the part that went inside just stitch make your stitch only on that side so that it doesn't have to show in front so once you've made that first stitch just go ahead and begin to place your beads on the rope so i'm just going to continue doing this until i get the length that i want if you're not someone who is very patient, please do not embark on this journey because trust me, it is time consuming and you will really, really get tired. But anyways, I've gotten one length. So this is long enough to get to the other side now. Make sure that you're arranging your piece very properly, that you're not bending it in any way for the very first one. So now it's long enough. You can see I straightened everything up here at the neckline. So it's long enough. I made it a little bit, let it fall down a little bit, not going exactly straight. So once you've gotten that length, go ahead and just stitch it into the other side. Make sure you're also stitching it to the back, just like I'm doing here. Stitch it to the back. Make sure to secure it in place so that it doesn't fall off when you're walking or anything. So you want to make sure that whatever it is you're using, that you tie it up very properly. So once you're through with the first one, you're just going to continue with the same process for every other one. So for the second one, I'm just going to also start like I did before. I came down by one inch from the first bead point. So now this is a quick one. For you to be able to get that stylish effect of the beads becoming smaller as you go down, you're going to arrange your fabric like I just did in form of a V. So the area you're going to place the bead, arrange it in form of a V and then continue to arrange your beads like you've been doing before. But just make sure that it's in form of a V. So that will give you that V shape. So when you're arranging your beads, it actually gets smaller as you go down. I hope you guys actually understand. This is how far I've come with the beadwork. You can see I've gone far. So I'm going to go ahead and do it to where I want it to stop. And I will show you guys the final look. So this is the final look of the kimono, guys. It's looking very beautiful. I stopped the beading on the hip line. So if you want to go down, you can go down. But mine stopped around the hip. So yeah, this is basically all for the making of this kimono. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find the video helpful. And I will see you guys in my next one.